Welcome to the 2021 recap of the Wayne State University football assignees. I'm Sports Information Director Jeff Weiss, and joined by head coach Paul Winters. Paul, looks like the Warriors came off with a class of about 24 guys. You have to be excited about what you're able to bring in for next fall. Yeah, Jeff, you know, it was it was exciting to kind of go out. We didn't really go out and recruit. We, we did it from our computers um, more so than anything, but we were able to find 24 to 25 really um, outstanding young men, um, outstanding student athletes and outstanding football players. You mentioned uh, outstanding student athletes. I know um, quite a few of them, I think it was around 14 or 15 or type of academic money that uh, I guess speaks to what they were able to do in the classroom in high school the last couple of years through all these uh, challenging times. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, with with the pandemic hitting, it would have been very easy for guys to to kind of fall by the wayside academically. But um, we've got a, an outstanding group of young men. Like I said, um, we have three eight, three nine, four point students, along with three one, three two, three three. I mean, just all up and down the line, outstanding guys that that. They have a good focus for what they want to accomplish, and um, academically, they've been able to do that. Uh, I was just curious if there was any correlation to you being an offensive-minded coach, and 16, 17 of our signees are from the offensive side of the ball. No, I think uh, when when you recruit, you, you look at the depth of your football team, and you try to um, fill in the holes, and as we... We sit here today, um, we've had a, a couple of weeks of workouts. And as we look at our football team that's here on campus, um, we felt like there were greater needs to fill um, with offensive football players. So, so we really attack those needs. Um, you look at our, our, our team on defense right now, and we're really good um, at most of the positions to where we're almost three deep at some of those positions. So um, we feel really good about the depth. So we didn't recruit as many defensive players. Well, one spot that um, I'm sure you'd love to talk about is the running backs. Obviously, from the last time we played over in Grand Valley, and I see the shoes behind you there, um, James Hill, Deontay Moffitt, uh, Deontay Nicholas have all graduated. So now you went out and recruited two fullbacks. I should add Stephen Sharon also graduated in that group. Two fullbacks and two tailbacks. So let's start off with the tailbacks in Prentice Reasonover and Tavion Warren. What can you tell us about these two guys coming in? Well, I shouldn't have to tell you too much about Prentice Reasonover because you know the Toledo area pretty <laughs> well. Um, he's from Toledo um, Central Catholic. He's an all-state, all-Ohio player. Um, dominant football player. He's a 200 pound tailback. And, and when you know how we like the bigger, stronger tailbacks, mm -hmm. um, has really great change of direction, um, has the ability to, to, to find the hole. And then you watch his tape and you watch him, he accelerates through that hole as well as anybody we've seen. So we're very excited about him. Um, you look at the tailbacks we signed last year, Myron Harris and Treshawn Hatcher. Um, you add Prentice Reason over to that group, and that's a that's a pretty impressive threesome right there. I know Tavion Warren is somebody that you've said could play running back or be a slot receiver. Um, I guess kind of in the Josh Rennell mode, where he can do a lot of things. Yeah, you know he what is he a state champion? Just missed it this this past year. Won it last year. Um, he's a young man who. Uh, add some speed to our group. He's a little bit smaller. He's 5'8", um, probably 185 pounds, but there's nobody any tougher than him, just like a Josh Vanell when you talk about that. Um, but, but we've been able to take guys like that, like a Kendall Williams, and put them in the slot and use them as receivers as well as tailbacks. And um, we're, we're very excited about uh, Tavion because – uh, you just look at their big playoff game against the Detroit Catholic Central. He made a huge hit that, that changed that game. 
Um, so he's, we love that toughness. Um, speaking of toughness, uh, first time I think we've recruited a player from an eight man football league, um, Nick Hayward from Bellevue. <laughs> you know, uh, everybody asks about that one. It's like, what are you guys doing in eight man football? Uh, but you turn on the tape and, <laughs> and this, this young man is six, two, he's close to 240 pounds and one of the most dominant tapes that you've ever seen uh, he's playing linebacker and nobody can block him um, he's playing running back and nobody can tackle him and it's I understand that there's missing three guys on the side of the ball but uh, he did some great things for us and, and you, you know how our fullback position is it's about toughness and and he's going to add toughness to our team um, you also added uh, John Reba as a fullback from, from Stony, Stony Creek. Creek. Right. Um, John Ray was another one, uh, just tough. Stony Creek had an excellent year. Um, I think they, they surprised a lot of people. Um, great game against Chippewa Valley. And and you you watch John Rayba play, and, and he plays how you want your fullbacks to play. Tough, physical, um, doesn't back down from any challenges. And... Um, we feel like uh, he's going to, he, he and Nick Hayward are going to give us that kind of toughness that we're always looking for. We're joined by quarterbacks coach, Jeff Reardon. Jeff, you brought in two highly talented, um, special kind of quarterbacks in Brady Hesbrook and Elijah Taylor. Um, let's start with Brady from Ithaca. What can you tell us about him other than he played for his dad? So obviously that was an interesting challenge. Yeah, really excited about both those guys. Um, like you said, Brady's from Ithaca, which is a, an outstanding program in the state of Michigan. Um, son of Terry Hesbrook, who's a Hall of Fame, you know, head coach, won five state championships up there. Um, but, you know, had a chance to see Brady uh, throw this summer with Coach Winters, went up there and, and had a chance to evaluate him. Uh, loved him in person, um, you know, talking to him, uh, loved the personality. Um, and then you love what you see on tape. He's a dual threat quarterback who can make all the throws that we need him to throw, um, we need him to make uh, from RPOs to intermediates to shots. Uh, but then he can also hurt you on the ground too with some of the quarterback run stuff. And um, I expect him to be a great culture guy who comes in and, and works hard, uh, inspires others with his work ethic and develops into a, a great leader and somebody that can compete for a, a starting position for us. Uh, Elijah Taylor, another guy from Northeast Ohio, Warren Harding High School. If I saw his uh, highlight tapes, he's a left-handed quarterback, something I haven't seen before at Wayne State. Yeah, me neither. Um, it'll it'll be it'll be different. It'll be new. Um, but you know, and we had we had Brady committed, and we felt great about it. Obviously, love Brady. Um, and then Coach Winters uh, sent me Elijah's tape, and it was. I mean, it just jumps out at you. Um, love the way the, the the ball comes off his fingers. Um, and, and, you know, it's the same thing we were talking about earlier. Can make all the throws. He has just a total command of where he locates the football, which you love to see, the accuracy. Um, and, and, again, just, you know, love the personality, the conversations you had with him. We signed him yesterday. He's, he's texting me right away, Coach, can I get – can I get the playbook? Can we start going over this stuff? You know, he's eager to learn. So uh, another guy that I know is, is going to come in and work hard and, and develop into a great leader for us. You have to be excited about the depth at quarterback. Obviously, you've got Jake back for another year, but then you have guys that, you know, redshirted this past, or, you know, were freshmen this past fall, like Josh Kalka, that um, quarterback position seems to be pretty deep now. It is. It is. And we're going to find those guys that have that sense of urgency to to learn the offense and 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 go out and, and execute it. And I don't care if they're a sixth year guy or a first year freshman. We're going to we're going to find those guys that have that sense of urgency to to go lead this football team and put the ball in the end zone and go win football games. All right. We are now joined by the newest member of the Warrior coaching staff, offensive line coach Joe Hensel. Joe, first year in and you get and you talk coach winners into letting you recruit six guys. You have to be excited about the quality and the quantity of this group. Yeah, we're really excited about the class. I mean, we're more about the quality than we are about the quantity of the guys. Um, 
we started off looking at guys with the high academics. Um, most of those guys are 3.0 or higher. Um, some got two of the guys are in honors college. So we're excited about having those guys that excel in the classroom because that's going to uh, pay dividends for us on the field when those guys are four or five years down the road um, graduating and also being great football players for us. Um, let's just go through them alphabetically. You picked up Hunter Omen from Garden City, 6'3", 280, a pretty good sized kid coming out of high school. Yep, Hunter played center for him, uh, all-state player. Really excited about him. He does a lot of things um, that we do schematically, uh, running the ball with some gap scheme stuff, moves his feet really well. He's a big body. He's a very positive person. He's got a great personality. Um, he's going to bring a lot to the table uh, within the room and in an offensive unit as well. So we're excited about him. Uh, I think he's going to have a really bright future. You know, he's also a high academic kid too. Um, Owen uh, Salink from Wayland Union High School, another 6'3", 280, 285-pound guy. Yeah, Owen Owen comes off the football. I mean, that was one thing. You watch his film. He runs off the ball. Anything in his path pretty much gets destroyed. Um, he's a 3'8 student. And, and, I mean, talk about a guy with a really high ceiling because he's not even close to being done where he could be at. And, I mean, he, he when he plays the game, he plays with a lot of enthusiasm and passion. And he gets better at the end of the games. Um, so he loves to compete. Um, and when tough tough times get going, he gets a little bit tougher. So we're really excited about him. Um, Adam Sarjo from Grand Rapids Christian, another 6'4", 6'5", 275 guy. Yeah, he's about 6'5". Uh, he's a really long player. He made a lot of progress from his junior season to his senior season. So we really like to see that so we can see him actually working and getting better in the offseason and progressing um, his time here. And I mean, he's just a big athlete. He's 6'5", he's all 275. He runs really well. Again, he's another kid who just pops off the football and, and moves people um, really quickly. So he's gonna have a bright future here if he keeps working and progressing like he did from his junior year to his senior season. I know we talked to Coach Winters earlier and he mentioned the running back from Toledo Central Catholic and we ended up getting three kids from there. You got yeah. one of them, Chris Sennett, 6'4", 300 pounds from Toledo Central Catholic. And another kid that, um, you know, as an academic type of kid. Yeah, he's a 4.0 and he's probably 310, 315. I mean, he's <laughs> he's large. He's a big guy. He's got really good feet. Um, he played tackle for him. He's going to play tackler guard for us. And he again, he's a guy who can move people off the football. He does really good things when he blocks in space, you know, linebackers or in the screen game. So uh, we're excited about him once we can really get our hands on him and mold him into the player that he can be. Um, you went out of state again for another um, offensive lineman, long snapper, Aiden Tweedy from Oswego, Illinois. Yeah, Aiden again, 4.0 student. Um, really excited about him. He has got phenomenal feet. Uh, he can move in space very well. He moves people off the football. He plays with great pad level. He's got natural leverage all the time. Um, and he can process information really quick and he plays hard. Um, and, and he really loves football. You know, he loves every aspect about it. So that gets you really excited to work with him. And staying out with the out-of-state theme uh, from Medina, Ohio, Sam Wabel, another Northeast Ohio product. Yeah, Sam uh, kind of got on Sam a little bit later in the process, but he is, he's 6'4", he's 285, uh, and he's got another huge ceiling. He moves really well. He's another guy when he hits something, it goes down. Um, he likes to come off the football and he's the, he's the guy that, you know, I think in a few years, people go, oh, wow, we got Sam Wabel. So uh, we're really excited about his potential. I mean, again, he's a kid who comes off the football and can't get enough of that. All right, jumping into the hot seat right now is wide receivers coach Chris Cowley. Chris, uh, you brought in three guys, uh, different sizes, uh, hopefully a lot of fast guys. Let's start with Dion Brown from Davison. Obviously a very athletic type of person. I understand he played quarterback at the end after the quarterback enrolled early in college. He, he did. And it kind of shows the, the, A, the athlete that Dion is, but also the, the mental capacity that he carries. You know, he was not a quarterback the entire season. Um, you know, obviously they had a, a phenomenal quarterback and he was the leader of the team. Um, when he enrolled early, you know, they were kind of searching around and Dion was a natural fit. Again, he's a great athlete, so he can run the offense, but also had, you know, a heck of an arm, which, you know, we kind of found out in the playoffs. Um, but his leadership, I think, is what really helped um, make that transition a little bit easier because obviously it's tough losing your starting quarterback when you're making a national or a state title run. So 
Yeah, he's a good athlete and smart kid. Do you think down the road, having played quarterback and had that, I guess, extra vision, now as a wide receiver, he might understand other plays or you know where he needs to be with defenses a little bit better? Absolutely, and that's something that you know I've tried to institute since I've gotten here is understanding more of the full field concept of what's happening around you, not just necessarily your job, um, but what everyone else is doing as well. And I think that again, that just gives Dion kind of a slight nudge um, in that direction of understanding, you know, yeah, I run this route, but in terms of the entire concept, um, this is what it should look like, and it, it just gives you some advantages on the field, I believe. Um. You Keeping with the Ohio theme that we've talked about earlier with some of the other coaches, uh, Javantre Rolden comes in. Uh, what can you tell us about Javantre? He's just a fluid, smooth athlete. Um, again, a kid that can really do anything for you. He can run vertical routes. He can go intermediate. Um, he's really good in the short passing game as well. Uh, an elusive kid. When you watch his film, you know, the first thing you kind of look at is he's just natural. You know, he doesn't look like a burner until you compare him to everyone else on the field and all of a sudden he's moving away from him. I'm really excited about him. Uh, again, a kid that, that works hard and I'd have to say someone that just really loves Wayne State. You know, from day one, he was committed to be about Wayne State and really wanted to be here. And obviously that's important, um, but that kid is just a fluid natural athlete. He did also play quarterback. Seems kind of well. ironic that it's it seems kind of ironic that his high school nickname was the Blue Streaks, and you talk about him being a vertical kind of guy. So, no question. And and he was another guy like Dion, where um, you know they had some quarterback issues, and he stepped in, played a little bit of quarterback for him, and again did a phenomenal job for him. Again, gives you that full field understanding of really what the offense is about and what we're trying to get accomplished. Um, you know, again, just an overall great athlete for sure. And then uh, you picked up Corbin Small from Avondale, kind of a taller wide receiver, 6'3", 190 kind of guy. Yes, and excited about Corbin just for his ability to be that big guy. Um, like you said, this receiver class is all different shapes and sizes and abilities. I mean, Corbin really fits a need that I felt that we had in terms of getting that big body receiver that can go physical, um, you know, corners out there on the outside, be a dominant force in the red zone. And, and he's a kid, honestly, that, he just has tremendous upside. You know, that's the first thing I noticed about him. You list the measurables. He's got the body. He's got the speed. He's got the athleticism um, and a really great kid, too. So it's just a full package and really excited about Corbin. Joining us now is tight ends coach Mark Nwicki. Mark, obviously bringing in three guys. That's a huge group for a tight end. And the size of these guys, you start off with like a Nick Williams, a 6'4", 220 guy from Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Obviously a very talented student athlete that can also play on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, Nick comes from a really great program uh, at St. Mary's and uh, has great length uh, and is a really versatile athlete. Um, so uh, a, a kid that... Uh, has a lot of production on the defensive side of the ball as a defensive end and as a tight end. So we're really excited about Nick's versatility and uh, similar to all the tight ends that we're bringing in uh, has a, uh, an impressive academic resume, guys that have demonstrated uh, reliability and responsibility. And we put a lot on our tight ends plate. Uh, they're part of the run game. They're part of the pass protection. They're part of the pass concepts. We move them all over the place formationally and motion them. So that that uh, that maturity and and uh, you know those high end academic kids fit perfectly in our tight end room. Um, one of the guys you brought in from Westland, John Glenn, Justin Hart, obviously another six three two fifteen kind of guy. Obviously, uh, family pedigree with um, being related to Mike Hart, the former running back at Michigan. Yes, sir. Uh, again, Justin is a terrific student, 4.0 uh, GPA and a multi-sport athlete, just a really versatile athlete himself, catches it really well, uh, really a threat after the catch in terms of uh, extending some of those plays with, with his ability to, to ex you know, extend and make people miss and run through tackles. Uh, and he's a young man with a tremendous amount of versatility that we're going to be able to move and utilize in a lot of different fashions formationally. Uh, in the run game as well. So really excited about Justin. Uh, he's he's uh, a young man that plays with great effort. When you watch his high school film, um, some of the plays that he's making from across the, the field, whether it's striving to get that, that block or, or make a tackle when he played defense, just he's got great effort on his film. And so we're excited uh, to bring him in. That'll be a perfect fit. And with our uh, the culture here that Coach Winters has established, uh, that blue collar, 
hardworking mentality. And the third person in your trio of tight ends from Detroit Catholic Central is Michael Ramirez. Yeah, Michael joins a couple other Shamrocks uh, that we have on, on the roster as well, and Will Butler and Cole Price. So um, continue to, to, to do well at Catholic Central. And, and Michael, again, is a very uh, responsible uh, young man, He's a class president, high academic achiever, and uh, has done a really nice job for Catholic Central as an inline tight end there. Obviously, they have a, a tremendous reputation at Catholic Central, Catholic Central for being very physical and running the football and getting downhill with the football. And so we're excited uh, to bring Michael on board and, and keep that that uh, tradition going here with, with being able to run the football. Michael's also a, an accomplished wrestler. And so that toughness uh, will serve him well here within our program as well. Joining us now is uh, veteran defensive line coach, Scott Kazmierski. Scott, you've been around with Coach Winters for every year, and yet you could only talk him into letting you recruit five D linemen. What's up yeah, with that? I, I try every year to get, get a couple more, but uh, nope, haven't been able to, to do that yet. Well, let's start with the DNs. Obviously, one guy that's uh, great athletic who's looking at – we're looking at both tight end and DN is Nick Williams uh, from Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Let's start off with Nick. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, uh, you know, especially in our meeting rooms because Nick uh, is a great athlete and uh, obviously, like you said, is very versatile in terms of being able to play tight end and DN and, and really excels in both of those positions. Um, does a tremendous job at DN, great frame, long. The thing you love about Nick, the high academics, obviously, is 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 the important part of that. And then on top of that, his passion and his love for the game. Uh, and constantly working out, constantly in the gym, trying to get better. Um, you know, definitely somebody you can't wait to get your hands on and, and, and whether it be at tight end or DN and just continue to have uh, Excel because uh, he, he's very passionate and loves the game. Um, another one of your DNs, Billy Abdallah from Detroit Country Day, a state champion. So that's got to be great to get somebody with that kind of pedigree in. Yeah, had a tremendous season there. Uh, obviously, state champ and and Coach McLean at, at Country Day. You know, they did a tremendous job. B Billy is a lot of fun to watch on film because uh, plays multiple positions. He he'll line up at DN. He'll line up at linebacker. He'll line up at three technique inside. Uh, very tough physical football player, um, and, and you know has a, a knack for getting to the football. Um, you know, even just uh, you know watching his film, his hands and and his technique is really solid. And and uh, you know we're real excited about him. And again. And just another one that, again, academically very, very solid uh, and loves the game. And, and you know, you love, you love working with that and coaching that. I feel kind of strange calling Aaron Mass a little brother at 6'4", 230. I don't know, Jacob came in even at that big of a size from Levon Franklin. At all. Not at all. We told Jacob, I, I know who was eating all your, your meals growing up. Uh, obviously, uh, Aaron being a little bit bigger. And, and uh, you know, we've had the opportunity, obviously, with Jacob up um, and getting to know his younger brother but Aaron's been coming to our camps for a long time now and we've had a chance to watch him over the years develop and and grow as a football player uh, another guy who loves the game and plays with a passion uh, runs around I mean talking to him yesterday uh, after he signed I, I mean he was so excited about it and can't wait to get here and start working out um, you know I, I, I can't wait to coach him as well um, you know he's a tremendous football player another guy that's got a knack for getting to the football uh, athletic and, and just does, does a real good job in there. Uh, I guess now that we're on the uh, trail of talking about big boys, uh, Vince Carpenter, 6'4", 322, from St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Louisville, Ohio. Yeah, we're, <laughs> big is the is the key word there, no doubt about it. And uh, um, you know, he's a he's a tremendous football player and even saying the size that you know over 300 pounds moves very very well and and will do a great job inside for us of of taking up those gaps inside and he's powerful and he's strong um you know he's explosive off the ball and, and definitely does a great job getting up the field um you know obviously when you're looking inside at d-line you need those big bodies in there and uh you know we're, we're like another guy we're very excited very high on and and excited to get to work with him and and see him run around because again for over 300 pounds he runs around really really well and and it's gonna gonna make a big impact for us um another big defensive tackle gus taylor from south lion i think he played for coach henson there 
Yep. For coach Henson out there at South line, uh, you know, athletic can move, um, you know, you watch his film and, and he's pulling on offense and, and uh, at guard and, and, and O-line. And, and then you look at him on defense and they're stunting him around. He's moving and twisting and, and uh, very strong, very powerful. Uh, he's a wrestler as well. So he understands leverage. Um, very, very excited about him. Uh, he's obviously uh, uh, we've recruited him for probably since um, the summer and everything. And he's been, you know, all about Wayne State, and 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 it was exciting to get him down here, him and his family. Uh, great football player, uh, plays with a lot of passion, uh, a lot of heart, um, and again, another guy that's got real good hands and is very physical. So, um, you know, again, D line, we, we like those big guys that are athletic and, and can move around. Joining us now to talk about the two linebacker recruits is Coach Peterson. Um, let's start in Ohio. Coach Winter's favorite place to start. Mm -hmm. um, from Warren, Ohio, Warren Harding High School, and Marion Perkins. Yes, yes. Marion goes by the nickname of Tank. Um, again, and he's a six foot, 200 pound uh, football player. He's explosive, explosive, physical. Again, comes from a uh, great uh, high school football program, Warren G. Harding High School in Ohio. Uh, you know, have through the years, great tradition. You know, they've had great players coming through there. You know, you think of the uh, guys like Maurice Claret and, uh, you know, again, and that's just the, the name one of them. But again, this kid is uh, all about football. He's a great fit uh, for Wayne State. Uh, again, he goes by the nickname of Tank. And again, I think, you know, again, as he was here, I got to uh, bump into him a little bit and a uh, physical specimen. That's six foot 200. Uh, you know, I can't wait to see him when he gets here and I can actually put my eyes on him and, and put my arms around him. You know, with this COVID, you really can't do that like you like to. <laughs> uh, the other linebacker we were able to sign, Mike Sherrill Jr. from Lakeland High School. Yes, yes, a very athletic kid, long, rangy, played a uh, receiver, you know, at, uh, at his high school and all over the field. They just basically put him wherever the ball was going on, on defense. He's a playmaker, you know, and his dad is a coach on the team who played college football. And uh, man, if he uh, develops like his dad looks, then shoot, we're gonna have another physical specimen out there. So again, just very, very pleased. And both of these kids are just great fits for Wayne State. They're kids that uh, shoot, chomping at the bit to be here. They wanna be here. And and a lot of times that, that's more important than uh, a whole lot of other things that, that you, get in the rec in recruiting. All right, we're now joined by co-defensive coordinator and defensive backs coach Lou West. Lou, we were able to bring in a couple of guys, obviously. Uh, Charles Coy III from Summit Academy North. Um, I believe he is also the quarterback there. So um, very athletic kid. What does that, um, what does he bring to the table for Wayne State? Yeah, exactly, uh, you know, a 6'1", 175 pound speedster. I mean, uh, like you said, he did play a little bit of quarterback. It shows his athletic abilities. But uh, for us at safety, which we're going to look at him at, uh, he has a lot of range, covers a lot of ground, does a great job of anticipating and breaking on the football. Obviously, he has uh, pretty good hands. Uh, and, and he knows what to do with the ball when he does make interception. But the thing that, that we really liked on defense about him was he would, he's, a come, he's a guy that comes downhill and will hit you. I mean, when he makes a tackle, it's a solid tackle. He, he brings you to the ground and, and uh, jumps back up and ready to do it again. I mean, a very exciting <laughs> player, very uh, uh, excited about having him in the secondary. Sounds great. And uh, as we've talked earlier, our Toledo Central Catholic, you get to complete the hat trick with Shaitwan James, 6'2", 180 defensive back. That's got to be exciting to get another person with that kind of height. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He's a guy that, uh, again, has good range. And, and you find that in this day and time, a lot of, uh, especially down in the red zone, uh, offensive, they, they'll just do the alley-oop ball on you. And, you know, and that's, that's why I like these long, tall corners, because they, they're going to be able to jump with those big receivers now and uh, create the problems that, that we hope to uh, create with those alley-oop balls back there. But uh, again, Shai Twan is a uh, uh, comes from not only uh, um, a good program, but, but a good school and, and uh, people that know how to win and, and put together uh, their um, uh, goals and stuff that's going to put them in position to be successful. So we're excited about having him on, on, our, on our team and in our secondary. 
And like I said, I think he's going to bring a lot to the, to the program as well. Coach Winters, back in the hot seat to help us wrap up this signing day feature. Um, obviously, the fall was a little different <laughs> with no games and limited practices. What does the spring kind of look like right now? Obviously, things might change, but what are you looking for in the next couple of months while you still have the kids on campus? You know, we've had two good weeks of, of skill development and uh, conditioning, and and it's amazing how excited you are about those little things, you know, and and how excited our players are about them. Uh, with, with COVID and with uh, quarantining and everything else, it's hard to get consistent work, and we've had two really good weeks of consistent work, so we're excited about that. We hope in March to actually get on the field and, and, and put the pads on. And ideally what we will do is we will, we'll practice three days a week in March and well, four days a week with, with some scrimmages on the weekends. And we'll hopefully do that through the rest of the semester and, and on to uh, into April. And, and at the end of the school year, we'll, kind of regroup, relax a little bit, refresh, and then uh, really start our, our conditioning preparation for the 21 season. Sounds great. I mean, obviously the 21 season, it'll be nice to have one. And obviously the GLIAC will look a little different with um, eight teams and playing one team twice. So the schedule will be a little bit of a different look this year as well. Yeah, I, I can't say that I like playing a team twice, but I don't really, you know, at, at this point, um, as long as you hit somebody in an opposite color jersey, that's kind of all you're looking for. But, you know, the, the thing that I think that you forget about our football team because we haven't played in 2020 is we've got some excellent football players that are returning. Um, they're a little bit older than normal college football players because of the, the extra year that the NCAA gave to them. But, you know, Jake Amarine has played a lot of football for us as a six-year quarterback. Um, I won't even tell you how many years Jalen Lewis has played defensive end here. Um, he may be older than Cam, uh, but <laughs> he, he, he's a great football player, you know, and he's a great leader. And, and you can see that leadership just this morning, I think it was, or yesterday morning, um, just watching him, you know, cheering the other guys on and, and, you know, offering words of encouragement. It was, it was exciting. Uh, Landon Mitchell and Lane Potter are two senior offensive linemen that were all conference, you know, so having those guys back gives us a lot of confidence and gives the guys in the room a lot of confidence and coach Hensel a lot of confidence. So, you know, we have Nick Potterack. Nick Potterack really stepped up in 19, which was his sophomore season. And so, you know, the maturity that, that his body has gained over the last two years is going to make a difference. So we haven't been on the field in a long time. We don't know who we are right now. We'll figure that out. But the, the, the whole process is exciting. You know, by the way, Jeff, I was listening to the conversations. So our recruiting coordinator, Coach Kazmersky, um, talking about only recruiting so many defensive linemen. You know he has four freshman defensive tackles from 19. All right. D -tackle. <laughs> so he has so many defensive linemen. And, and, and you look at that. Damani Green. Damani Green's a great player. You know, Charles Ellington is a great player. Those two guys have had another year to grow and mature. And and Kane Quinlan has had a year to grow and mature. And and Damon Duncan. And I you know, you can go on and on and on. JP Morris actually had surgery and was going to miss 2020. Well, guess what? He'll be back for 21 healthy. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's so many dang D linemen. Coach Kazmersky doesn't have enough room in his room. <laughs> so and anyway. here I thought they were knocking out the wall for the elevator, but it no, ends they're up doing being it for the <laughs> extra D lineman for Vince Carpenter. Um, but in all <laughs> seriousness, like I said before, the depth in the defense is so good and so outstanding. And 
and we're so excited about last year's class that nobody saw. You know, you haven't had mm -hmm. a chance. We haven't had a chance to see them other than in shorts. So uh, the the enthusiasm for this football team and from this football team is going to be outstanding. I mean, that obviously poses an extra challenge. Like you said, you have the kids that were freshmen in the fall of 20, you've only seen in shorts. So now you come August camp, you're actually going to have two full classes that really haven't had a college practice, you know. Yeah, the amazing thing, and it's, it's funny. I mean, it, at this point, it's hilarious. But let's think about this. So number one, this, this class that we have coming in, I haven't seen their faces. All I've seen is them in masks. So like they're putting videos together and I'm looking at the videos. I'm like, that's what he looks like. <laughs> How many times do you not even know what your recruits look like? Um, but, but think about this. So the 2019 class, we signed 30 guys. All right. Well, we redshirted probably 25 of those guys in 2019. We signed another pretty close to 30 last year, maybe let's say 25. Um, well, we didn't play in 2020, so that's close to 55 guys, right, who have never played college football, and we're bringing in 25 more. <laughs> so we're having close to 80 guys that have never played a college a down of college football. That's nuts. I mean, crazy. And somebody has your first team against Slippery Rock. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to talk about you, Jeff. Uh, it, and and let's go back to 19, Jeff, thinking about Slippery Rock. So we opened up with Slippery Rock and and Truman State, two top 25 teams. And 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 Ferris was shortly after that. And, um, you know, we kind of we those were our losses. Right. Um, yeah. The games that, that, that we ended up losing. So, again, we didn't know who we were at that point. Um, we, we suffered some tough losses. But once we started to discover who we were, those losses helped us be a better football team. So, you know, opening up with Slippery Rock, that's going to force us to improve. And, and ideally, you improve with a win as opposed to improving with a loss. But we'll be a better football team at the end of the year because we open up with Slippery Rock. So don't take any guff from anybody about scheduling Slippery Rock. That's a good schedule. Cool. All right. Well, Paul, we really appreciate your time and can't, I'm actually getting excited now to, you know, come out and watch your boys practice in March. So. Oh, you're going to like us. <laughs>